been a couple weeks since I've gotten any significant garage time. And that's because I've been out of town. Supercharger bracket, that aluminum bracket is functional, but not quite what I need it to be. And therefore those two pieces still need to be remachined with a few minor adjustments, but uh, at least I know the direction that's going. A lot of scrap over here from various prototypes that were being made. In the last video, at least the last shop video, you saw that I started having some problems. And here was an attempt I had at where I was trying to make my son a keychain and it just totally screwed up. I was trying to make an Avengers A here and it just totally screwed it up. So it's because I broke a wheel. I took it all apart, kind of in a rush before I left. <laughs> and now I'm looking at it saying, where did that wheel come from? I'm looking at all the pieces trying to figure out where it came from. So I'm going to decipher that today. I'm glad I had a prior video on the unboxing and assembly of this because I was able to look at that and see right here on my Z-axis motor that I am missing two wheels. And so yes, when I took this apart, I forgot, I, uh, I took both these upper track wheels off because this uh, the way this guy mounts is this belt feeds up through here and makes the X direction movement. And this guy right here is the one that does the Z axis. However, what had happened was he mounts like this. So you've got the way these aluminum cross members are, are created is they've got a, an edge here. It's like a little lip sticks up about maybe an eighth of an inch. The, uh, the track, the shape of that track is perfect for these little groove wheels. And so you have a set here and you have a set here. You have two on this side and two on this side. So these top ones, first of all, make it difficult for you to take it off without loosening them. But one of them cracked. I don't know if you can see this very well. There you go. So you can see how bad that is. And what happened was, what, what does that do? As the Z member is here to travel, when it tries to go in the X direction, every time this wheel goes over a revolution and reaches a crack spot, it's rocking like this. This is exaggerated from it, but it was rocking like that. And if it's rocking in this direction, that also means that when the Z axis goes up and down, it's kind of doing this as a result. I started to have some very inaccurate machining, which gradually worsened and sort of went into this like period of resonance where it just shook itself apart. Bad news. So the good news is that Carbide 3D sells a maintenance kit. It's got a bunch of wheels in it. They've got new belts, new spindles for the, uh, the new, new pulleys for the servo motors and uh, some some of their nice stainless steel hardware that they use to assemble all this. I think this is 99 bucks and well worth it as far as I'm concerned because all the major wear items will be replaced. I also discovered while being on Carbide 3D's website that one major upgrade I've been wanting to do with this system is add limit switches and they've got them for 50 bucks and they plug right into the board. So that'll be the next upgrade I do to this. They ship the Shapeoko 3 now with limit switches, which is awesome. This has been one of my biggest problems. You know, maybe I'm just an idiot, but I run into the edges all the time and it goes and makes this terrible noise and it's bad on the motors. There was something else that was compounding the, uh, the breakage. And that was that this mount for the router was loose. So frankly, I'm not really sure what broke first. Either the wheel broke first or the router hold down went loose first, which caused some chatter, which broke the wheel. In either case, all those are bad. And you can see that there's some constraints of degrees of freedom in this system that really are critical. I'm gonna really have to watch this stuff and check it. It's costly for the materials, but it's costly for the time too. So I got the belt threaded back through. I've got the two new wheels mounted on and I'll show you a little bit. Uh, so the trick with the belt is you got to route it up through there and then get it wrapped around the pulley. And then you can do some adjustments after the fact to uh, get the belt tightened and adjusted. And, and the way that works is you've got these little manual tabs at, the, at either end and you thread it through kind of like a belt loop and you can make it tight and then screw it into place. So one of the unique ways that this Shapoko is designed is that to 
make sure that the, the wheels clamp onto this track is that they've got these eccentric nuts. Um, uh, how to explain it? These, these nuts, the, the hole in the, in the nut here is off center, which means when you tighten it, it's kind of like a cam. So it rotates like this around the center, which means the wheel on the back end is also doing this. So that means that there's some adjustment here in the Z direction. And uh, when I took this off, in my haste, I, I didn't really want to play around with these nuts because I frankly, um, you know, I can't tell if they've, I don't want to make them loose, right? So the good thing though is that I should be able to do a little bit of tuning here. Alrighty. So I have it mounted finally. Uh, getting these wheels, I don't remember it being this much of a problem when this came out of the box, but it took a lot to get these wheels to sit on top of the tracks. So I loosened everything, including these two pulleys here on the back side of this plate that um, attach to the X axis belt. I mean, as tight as I could. The belt's really tight. Actually, by having these pulleys loose, when I tighten them down, it, it helped tighten it up even more. So, you know, I'd rather have the belt wear out as a consumable, but you know, whatever, uh, I, I could still make it work by moving, I moved the whole x-axis gantry all the way forward to the edge here. And I could actually slip this on from the bottom and I'll have to tighten it up with these cam bolts again. And the next items to assemble are to get this belt around this top loop and the bottom tensioner pulley and also get the springs reinstalled. Can you put the see the camera? Can you make sure it's pointing right there? And I'm gonna tell the camera what's going on. Is that okay? Can I talk to the camera for a second? I see the camera. I see the computer. Okay, good. So let's demonstrate how everything's working. I see your arm. We have uh oh I'm not dropping the camera. I'm really glad that you're not dropping the camera. So uh, after these test cuts, I see that I've got a little bit of an issue of not a very clean machining finish. So I found that there's this nice feature on the iPhone. I actually got this from Jeremy Schmidt his YouTube channel, really smart kid. Uh, and he showed how he uses his iPhone to do some very fine optical measurements of things. And so I took this and I uh, took some pictures with it on my iPhone now. The way the iPhone works is hit the button three times. And then you get this awesome feature. And Jeremy showed this on his YouTube channel, so I credit him with this. But uh, when you look at something like this, I mean, you just get some phenomenal, phenomenal high resolution imagery. And I, you know, I work in a laboratory that's a materials laboratory and we have an optical microscope that costs about $5,000 and this is pretty darn good imagery. You know, it's probably, you know, I don't know what the magnification on this, probably 10 to 20X, but pretty darn good. Like, look at that, that is awesome. So I, I just moved this to 15,000. So right here at the very, very, very tip of those calipers, I've got a 15,000 inch, essentially micron marker. Let's put them up here for reference, all right? Now watch this. One, two, three. There's our iPhone microscope. But you can see there that the, there's a lot of dirt under my fingernails and that's 15 thousandths and some of the junk that's sort of left behind is about that size. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to try to do, what does this mean? I'm going to try to tighten up the machine a little bit and see if I can correct some of this. And then I'm also going to slow everything down by another, say, factor of 25%. These cam bolts on the, uh, these cam nuts on the track guides are tight. And this is as tight as it's going to get. And you can see what position those are in. Sort of the wide end of the nut is uh, sort of facing in this general direction. And same for that one. If you can see it, I've got this Allen wrench here stuck through this hole in the back and it's going into the bracket. 
that holds the router. And I'm gonna tighten that up, make sure that's as tight as it will be. Now a little tip on when you're using uh, Allen wrench with this end as the screwing end rather than this end. If you're using an Allen wrench with this tip in the, when you're using an Allen wrench with this tip as the action end, you have very little leverage to twist here. But when you really want to tighten it, this is the end of course that you want to use because then you get lots of leverage. You get a nice big torque arm here. So how do you do this when you need to reach far into something like I just did there and tighten it up? Well, I always use an adjustable wrench. I could put an adjustable wrench on this end, stick it into the area that I want to tighten up, and then I can use this as the torque arm. These are all the adjustment points. I tightened both bolts in the back of the bracket. I tightened all the wheels in the carriage for the Z-axis, and I tightened all the wheels for the carriage on the X-axis. So those should all address the slop, and I hope that did it. The last item might be this belt. Basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine adjustment points to make sure that the X and Z parts of this machine are stiff. All right, so the very last thing I'm doing is putting a new end mill in. I figure that's cheap insurance. And I have a tendency, just like I'm sure a lot of people do, to just take bits out, swap them, and I don't know what's been used and what has before. This one got a little bit chewed up. I think it's a little dull, I'm not sure. So I put a permanent marker stripe on it just to make sure I know that. I'll put this guy in. So I changed a number of variables. I tightened up all those things on this axis. I'm gonna put a new bit in it and then I'm gonna slow everything down and I'll get to those in a second. Let's just go over these again. I, I cut them down even more conservatively. 10 thousandths of an inch depth per pass. I left the step over at 0.113. The feed rate is 15 inches per minute. The plunge rate is 10 inches per minute. We're using a quarter inch end mill. And we're going 100 thousandths deep. didn't come out bad um, still not great a little bit better finish I think it's a little bit more consistent this aluminum I'm really not sure what kind of aluminum this is it's like a really soft really soft aluminum and it tends to leave a lot of like junk it leaves a lot of junk behind when it machines like this is 6061 aluminum and you can see that it machines real nice even though that was all messed up Machining marks are much more consistent. If you look at the edges of this A where it goes down, can you see that? Like this is the area where it would always step down, step down, step down. And that's where I always get the most trouble. That's pretty good compared to that. I think it's pretty chewed up in there. Those settings, I would say, uh, work pretty well. I'm still a little, I, I might even go a little bit more conservative on the depth per pass. I didn't use lubrication on these. Um, I was using tap magic when I milled the supercharger brackets, and I would still suggest that. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see in my prior videos, what I was actually doing was time to time, I was opening up the enclosure and spraying a bunch of tap magic in there and then closing it. And I was just throwing that on the surface as it machined. But hey, you know what? This this ain't bad. Thanks for watching.